Today I thought I'd revisit my batch file tutorials and try to make a new series here. So this is going to be the new basic batch file scripting in a way. So I'm going to teach you what a batch file is, what's the difference between a batch file and an executable file, which is a normal program that you download off the internet, why batch files are useful, and how do you make batch files. And then afterwards, I'm going to teach you um, some very bit basic, simple commands that you can use to write your first batch program. So what is a batch file? Well, according to Wikipedia, in MS-DOS, which came before Microsoft Windows, it is, quote, the name given to a type of script file, a text file containing a series of commands to be executed by the command interpreter. And the command interpreter is what we call the command prompt. Now this comes in every version of Windows and how you can access it is by hitting the Windows key and R and typing simply CMD and hitting OK. So a batch file is a text file which basically tells this thing to, you know, execute all the lines of text in that file in order. So like if I say echo hi and then echo hi again, a batch file would make my life easier so that I only have to click once and only write this once to do this, echo hi and hi again, as many times as I want. So this came out, like I said, before Microsoft Windows. So you're thinking, well, wasn't Windows always like this? There was something before Windows. Well, what that was was MS-DOS. And for the younger generation, it stands for Microsoft Disk Operating System. And this, as you can see by the little thumbnail, was all your computer was. You didn't have these fancy internet browsers and pictures and folder files and names and, well, you had names, but you didn't have icons. You just had text. So all you would experience is a black screen with text and you'd type in commands. So yeah, but now Windows basically still uses this, except for it's kind of behind the scenes. So for example, if I want to make a new folder by uh, within the command prompt, all I have to do is MD new folder. And I've just made a new folder. As you can see here, I have a new folder. So anyway, without going into too much of the depth of this MS-DOS stuff, which you can read up on your own, we're going to, um, you know, get into how to make one yourself. So I've opened up a new folder here, and all you have to do to make a batch file, and like Wikipedia stated, all it is is a text file. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click, go to new, and click on new text document. We can leave the name whatever you want, because we're going to rename it right now. Open it up, go to file, save as, and then we're going to name it batch file, select all files, and at the end of your name, we're simply going to put period cmd. So when we save this, it tells the system to recognize it as a batch file, which is what we see here. It gives it this fancy little icon, and well, we have a batch file. Now you may see on the internet where some people use batch file, for example, .bat. You can also use that. It works pretty much the same way. There are a few finer details between the two. But this, again, is a beginner's course, so we're not going to go into that. What's the difference between this and a program you download off the internet? For example, Skype. Well, here I have the program Skype. The actual program, you can see here, here it is almost 20 megabytes. And here I have an empty batch file. You can see here, if you right-click on Skype, you can choose to open it. Or you can choose to open it. There's no open with or open whatever, whatever, whatever. Now you can open this with a basic text editor like Notepad, and you'll find out soon that it takes a long time to read all of this because it's an extremely large file. So I'm just going to pop this up on the second screen and see how long it takes for that to work. But in the meantime, if we look at our batch file, if we right click on it, we have an edit option. Now that's kind of weird. Why would you want an edit option on your program? Well, it turns out that unlike Skype and any other program like that has a .exe, a batch file is a plain text program in a way, so it reads the text. So you can update this 
as much as you want. You don't have to recompile, rebuild, redistribute your program. All you have to do is edit the text. Now that can be a bad thing if you're making a security program, but they do make batch to exe converters, which we'll get into much later. So one of the more basic things and something you'll really want to get in your head to start with every time you make a batch file is the at symbol, the word echo, a space, and the word off. Now what that does is get rid of this little thing here called the prompt, which tells you the location that you're in. So if we do at echo off in CMD, we now have this blank, uh, blank cursor, which we can still type commands into, etc. But it doesn't show the prompt. So that's nice because it'll take away that and it'll make your program look a lot more professional. The next thing that I like to do in all of my batch file programs is change the title, which is this text up here on the top of um, whatever the window is. So let's go back into CMD and let's type in title and then title. Very creative and now we have the title of title. So you can see how that really enhances your program. So for example, here on my computer, I have created a batch file to test the connection. And if I open that up, you can see here that it says testing connections on the top. Now that looks a lot cleaner than it's saying, for example, C slash batch files slash whatever, whatever, where your program is located. It just looks a lot more professional. So we're going to change the title of this to YouTube test. Now, seeing this as a beginner tutorial, we're going to make a Hello World application. Now, don't run away quite yet, though. I understand Hello World applications are very extremely boring in most programming languages. Not much different with Batch, but it does demonstrate one key command that you will be using a lot throughout your Batch file scripting career, and that is the echo command. So the echo command does really what it says. It echoes the text that you write in here out to the command line, which is what your eyes, the user, sees. So we're just going to type in echo, hello, YouTube. So now we have that. And if we try to save it and run our program, it just opens up and exits right away. So that's really useless to us. So how do we make it stick around? Well, that's another key feature that you're going to be using a lot. It's called the pause command. All you do is type in pause, hit save, open it up, and now it says press any key to continue. But that can get really annoying within your long programs that look really awesome and then it says press any key to continue and you're like, ooh, that looks terrible. I don't want that in my program. It doesn't look like I want it to. So what you can do is you can put a space after that pause, give it a greater than sign, and then N-U-L, which will tell it not to display any information going along with the command, but it will still execute it. So now if we put above that an echo period, which is something that I also didn't learn for a long time, it creates a blank line in your batch file. So it'll, it's basically like pressing enter in notepad, creates a blank line. Very helpful, very good thing to learn. So now if we say echo, press any key to exit. Hit save, run our program. It says, hello YouTube, press any key to exit. We press any key and it exits just like we want it to and it doesn't show that annoying message. So that's really great. And what's even greater is that Notepad finally loaded our executable program Skype, and now it's frozen again. So as you can see here, this goes on and on and on and on and on, but Notepad doesn't understand binary, so it's trying to put it into plain text, which you can see it really doesn't do that great of a job, but you can see how much of a pain this is to edit. You can't. So that's where batch files are really nice. You can edit them whenever you want, however you want, with Notepad, whatever, with Notepad++, which I'll get into in the next tutorial. And basically, that's batch file. So you've just created your first batch file program. 
you've understood what the batch file is, what's the difference between that and an executable, why a batch file is useful, and how you make them. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to click the little subscribe button below. That really helps me out. And give it a thumbs up if you like it. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is video number one of the Batch File Scripting Tutorials.